I bet you can relate to this. I'm Bernie Martin Beck, and this picture tells the story. Oregon or bust, if you can read right there. And how many of you folks came? Well, maybe some of you were on a covered wagon. But um, my guest is going to tell us about coming out west. Welcome, Beth. Thank uh, you. Tell me, where was it? Where was home at this time? Well, that was a generation before you. Yeah, um, it would have been in Maryland. My grandfather painted that, and uh, my mother, his, his daughter, and son-in-law, my folks, um, had gone out west to live. <laughs> and so a city boy's um, impression of what out west was, anyway, uh, and he painted that, and we just adore it. But um, they had come out west and um, gone to first California and then to uh, Sunny Valley. And Sunny Valley. And that's Val going through um, Idaho with all the sheep and with stuff. We had cows <laughs> on the you ranch. Had your we ranch. had some sheep too, but not But like that. let's talk about how you got into this family, because it's fascinating. They had been married for quite a while and sadly were not able to conceive. And so they had put in for, um, uh, to adopt a child. And shortly before the cutoff point to adopt a baby, um, they were able to adopt me. Because they, I guess it was just a shortage of babies during the war and then the baby boom happened. Um, so you're Afterward. How, you're just like a one year old here. Oh, maybe not even that. How ha and here you are probably less. I don't I'm not walking yet or anything, so it's a it's a fun story because your family had some very nice things, right? Grand yeah. yachts. My my father grew up when the family really <laughs> had money. But it just kind of tapered down as time went by. So the, that's where the Pepsi Cola comes in, yeah, right? From my grandfather. Grandfather owned the whole. Well, he must. He started have, it after it went bankrupt. This is him. And and so oh. he um, he had plenty of money. Oh yeah, and he was in the chocolate business. And my dad would tell me that they would buy sugar and syrups and all that kind of stuff by the railroad tanker car. Uh, oh. You know, I mean, huge amounts of stuff to make baked goods and candies and all that stuff for the restaurants and confectioneries and then they, that he owned. And then they got into Pepsi-Cola. Pepsi, I, you know. Well, they've changed the name now. He, he lost the company in, I don't know, I think it was the early 40s. So but, uh, Grandpa after he developed it, and then he lost it. And uh, your, your dad was in the business, uh, you told us. Mm -hmm. He and his brother both. And his sisters had stock until the crash. Yeah, well, before that. Before the... Before the, the lawsuit, and he lost the company. And on tiny hinges... Great doors do swing. Mm -hmm. I hear that and I think, yes. You know, we might have been, my uncle said, why didn't you move to a city and, and where you could put dollars together instead mm -hmm. of nickels? And my dad said, Grants Pass was a great place for the kids to grow up. Yeah. Southern yeah. Oregon, there's nothing like yeah. uh, being in small towns wash in, in California. In the, Northern yeah. California. So if Dad had stayed on as president of Pepsi Cola. Um, he probably wouldn't have lived too long. He had high blood pressure even as a young man, and a stressful job like that takes its toll on executives. So I was very blessed. I had him to, into his eighties, and it was. Because of him and sharing on the at the Rotary that I learned about this 
family living out in Sunny Valley. They were one of the very first people to move. Yeah. Well, way, Colonial Valley too. Oh, a Colonial Valley, uh -huh. way Colonial. out in the country, people would say. Oh they, yeah, it was way out there. <laughs> <laughs> and for you folks that aren't, aren't acquainted, I mean, Sunny Valley is probably 20 miles north of Grants Pass. Well, Sunny Valley's on the other side of Mount Sexton, but Colonial Valley, they even thought was really far when he bought the land to develop that. And this was before there was hundreds of houses and a golf course there. Um, yeah. Well, he had a land subdivision, so he sold to four builders. But it was he and my mom and another couple. The couple owned the property on the flat part where the golf course and different things are, and then their property tapered up. It was like 400 acres or something. I have the last piece. Ah. It's, it's just a little, little and, piece. And Who's this? Oh, that's me when I was in, um, uh, I guess, high school. Where did you go to high school? Westlake School for Girls. Oh, back to California, huh? Oh, yeah. yeah. And summers were spent on the farm? Uh, no, by that time they'd sold it. But uh, we would uh, go by car back and forth to uh, Maryland to see relatives every summer. I just love these pictures, a soldier boy coming oh, home. Yeah. And, he was so yeah. handsome in his uniform. Isn't that? Um, but and both my parents were just skinny as a rail, so they didn't know quite how to deal with me when I was growing up. <laughs> I was so chubby. I was born way underweight because I was two months early. And I think I weighed something like three pounds, five ounces. But and it's interesting because Patrick, we were born at, in the same month, not the same year, same month, same hospital. What are the chances of that? Now, Patrick is... <laughs> we were is, both preemies at that hospital. And Patrick is the light of your life. Oh, yeah, he is. And this is romance Oregon style, right? Oh, yeah, this, I truly believe the Lord brought us together. I mean, we just hit it off right away. And he came to visit his sister and, and two brothers and their families live in Medford, Central Point, um, Central Point and uh, Gold Hill. And so. while there, someone said, you ought to meet Beth. Well, I don't know that they even said that. They just, it was the last few days he was going to be there. And the sister and brother-in-law, um, he was staying with them and they were coming to church because we go to the same church. So they brought him along. And uh, then we ended up, went out to breakfast afterward and just talked and talked and we just hit it off from there. Perfect. It I was like we'd known each other for so long because we led kind of parallel lives. We'd lived in the same places, but not the same time and knew a lot of the same events and people and things. So it was. Well, I put up this needlework. Your mother made these for a special, special reason. Hmm. And you'd open the door of, it was a barn, right? That they well, they had... redid it. It had been a barn and a, where they stored the boat and my dad had his woodworking shop. It's just exquisite. You would open the door and here were this flight of stairs. And I want you to see every one of these. Because... They look a little different since I took them off the stairs, but they're really beautiful. And but she every, did all of this by hand, picked out all of the materials. She would start with one of these burlap pieces and go from there. But it just took years and years. But uh, it was a labor of love. We're going to scan through every one of them so you can see the, the old mill like we have out at Eagle, Eagle Point. Oh, that's right. I've been wanting to go there. Oh, do it. It's oh, a I'd wonderful. It. Yeah. It's so much fun. Yeah, both of us love historic things like that. And, so. and then the covered bridge is in Rogue Rib, uh, Sunny Valley. Sunny Valley, where you and your family had acres and acres of... Oh, we had 1,019 acres. Of I started school there and then had a little um, house that had been turned into a uh, schoolhouse with two... Two classrooms, three grades each. Now it's a house again, <laughs> but um, that's right next there. to the museum, isn't it? 
No, yeah. it's further down. Because if you haven't been to the Covered Bridge this Museum. This is in between the school and the museum. I have to get out to the museum, too. The Covered Bridge Museum is, a, it, no matter where you live, plan to bring a picnic and spend a couple hours there. There's picnic tables oh, and just yeah. a wonderful. But they, I love the charm of a covered bridge. Anyway, there's just nothing like it. They're just wonderful. So your mother really had a, a, think, a hand for the arts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and my dad did woodworking and stuff too after he retired. What about grandpa? Oh, yeah, he did that one, too, about the, the fellow lounging on the shore, and it's probably on the Chesapeake Bay, because they would go on the boat, too. All my aunts, <laughs> great aunts, and grandparents, and everybody, and uh, we'd take picnics and stuff, but... Uh, now we'll... And this was back east when they... when your dad was in the military? Oh, he was stationed a lot of different places, from what he tells me, but... Uh, he was not... Can an officer? No. Well, you work your way up. You know, you get drafted and you know work your way up. But two openings came for the officer candidate school, and uh, there were I don't know hundreds of guys applying. And my dad had never been to college, but he studied like crazy, and he was just a very smart, intuitive man. And he got one of the two positions. We were. You know, I've always been proud of him for that, so. And can you point him out? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I know, they all look alike, but that's right. my dad. That's your dad. Yeah, he's in the middle under one of those flags. Um, now, let's just talk a little bit about your mom, uh, mm -hmm. because she came from the East. Yeah, so both of them came from uh, German stock. Um, um, my mother's mother was German, and my, both my father's parents were German. My little grandfather was English, Irish, and Welsh. And he somehow is related to one of the poet laureates of England, and also one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence, Charles Carroll. But um, so they, they came from good families and stuff. But my dad had kind of absentee parents a lot, though. So he really found out what family was like when he started to date my mom. And, and that's happened in those days where wealth and uh, business first and kids in the background. Oh, yeah. And well, the children should be seen and not heard, that kind of thing. And if they, the nanny could take care of them and the school mom and whatever. Mm -hmm. um, we're glad you came out west. Or I bet you. <laughs> I'm glad they did too. Or I wouldn't have met them. <laughs> because uh, the where you were born, where where is Los your, Angeles? You were born in Los Angeles, and you were adopted at two days old. Or well, I was so little. I was in a incubator for two. I think two or three months, something like that. Because you have to weigh five pounds before you can go home. Ah, and they had adopted you before you were born? I, d I don't know. I couldn't get them to tell me anything about that. <laughs> I think it was after I was born, because oh. Mom said they got a call that I was being born. So she went, um, Dad was off on a business trip or something. She and my aunt went to the hospital when I was born. And here's but it always time. takes a while for the paperwork and everything. So. Uh, I was born in January, but then I think I was adopted in March. They have to see if you're going to live first, do what, I, whether to buy, you know, bother with the paperwork. <laughs> but, um, and then I went home. Um, you mentioned about your mom. She was a very artistic, like the rest of the family. And I want people to be able to see every one of these needle pieces. Yeah, these are charming. Uh, when, when I went into their home, 10 years ago into this barn, which was, I'd already been uh, aware that these old barns became gorgeous homes mm -hmm. because the Wamplers had done the same thing downriver oh. at what is now OK, uh, OK Corral and where you go down on the boats. Oh, on the jet boats, yeah. And the original 
barn there became this gorgeous home. I mean, those timbers, it was just oh, incredible. Yeah. Uh, and your folks had moved on to where the barn was. Yeah, well, they put in hardwood floors and everything. So the front patio was kind of sloped because that was originally the driveway that, and the big window, picture window, was where the garage door went up and they backed the boat in there. But uh, And every one of these, and, and when I walked in, the stairway was just like you were looking in a museum to find out that she had done each and every one of these. Oh yeah, they're like courier knives. I want to show every one of them of that. And, uh, in detail. But then she picked the colors of the, each the pick. part that you actually walk on to kind right. of go with each picture. So imagine too. that I, I am the stairs and you would step here, but as you were stepping. The risers are where the pictures were. And yeah. you would see this and the beautifully done, you know, uh, natural wood banisters and stairs over here, you could see. And this was- It was tricky going up those things because it was a barn, so the railing only went up one side halfway. <laughs> and they're really deep stairs, and I have short legs, so. Well, but. and a little kid, you were- Oh, I got short legs now. I have the <laughs> leg length of an eight-year-old, but. Um, but it looks so pretty. You'd stand at the bottom of the staircase and look up and see all these beautiful pictures. And we will look at every single one of them. But speaking of, hmm, you brought a <laughs> Cadillac here. Oh, What's yeah. that all about? My purple transportation. Um, well, and, if I don't have to carry anything, then I can just use my cane. But if I've got purse, groceries, whatever, then, um, then I use that. And I had it. I had a different one because this wonderful friend of the family's loaned me hers that had been her husband's. So I had a different one for the wedding, kind of on standby. But, uh, and then I decorated it up, you know, for the oh, wedding. I didn't see a picture of that. So you were married when? Last August. And uh, this is a newlywed. And I'm so <laughs> anxious to meet the groom now. But all these Pepsis are. Uh, well, now my cousin. Well, I had two cousins walk me down the aisle. And it's funny because when I first planned the wedding, I thought, well, I have a cousin from uh, my mother's side of the family and a cousin from my father's side of the family walk me down the aisle. Well, it's a good thing because they had to hold me up. <laughs> you know, but anyway. Well, but the one, he still is with Pepsi. And uh, his father, the one, my mother's brother that was in that picture with the boat, um, he was a bottler so that he didn't lose his job when, when Pepsi, um, uh, the new owners fold. Yeah. took over. So that and another brother-in-law of my dad's, they were bottlers and everything. I love the way she so. pronounces it. I would have said the bottlers. And uh, when she first said I, it, I, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a little bit of that New England, I think, that, I know, uh, or the East Coast. Uh, um, I, I got all kind of accents in my family. There's some that are the northeast, some are in the south. Some, my one cousin has a New Jersey accent. He wouldn't admit he still has it, but I can pick it up. And um, there's different ones. And my mother's baby sister, her and her husband, we'd call them about every week. And it's, hi, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> but she was the sweetest thing, though. Um, I used to tease my mom because I looked more like her her and my dad than, than my mom. But, but they tried to, you know, they tried to match up culturally and looks and different things with the, an adoption with the parents. But it was almost uncanny. <laughs> <laughs> that it looks like yeah. family. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, the, the whole idea of the coincidence of meeting her parents and doing this TV show and going into their home, and now to meet you and to bring the same stair step. Well, that was just a happenstance, too. I think How that the happen? Lord must have brought us together because we ran into each other, and I thought, I know her, and I'm so terrible with names anyway, always have been. And then, but you were talking to the other lady. We were all in the waiting room, but she mentioned your name before you went in when you were called, and I thought, that's her name. So I thought, I'll talk to you. I'll get up the nerve and talk to you when you come back out because I wanted to say thank you because uh, 
my folks had enjoyed that so much. And I thought, oh, gee, it's been years ago. Will she remember who they are? And then she's never met me. So this could, whole thing could be a disaster. <laughs> but the minute I mentioned them, you knew right away who that was. And so it How all worked out. How could you forget the stairs? How could you forget? Yeah. At, at, well, I wasn't there when they interviewed, see, so we hadn't met, so I didn't know what you'd seen or talked about of, or... Of course not. Anyway, because you've interviewed so many people in your career, so I thought, well, I just have to leave it in the Lord's hands and she'll remember <laughs> who that is. But oh, anyway. I, in fact, I tried to get a hold of uh, Bob Bird's daughter today just to let her know how it's much I appreciated her father putting me in touch oh. with your parents. I mean, this is the way it works. Friends sharing friends. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, wow, there is not, it's a privilege. It really is a privilege to have met you. And oh. I am still in. The same on my part. I'm we're, we're still both health problems. We deal with it all the time. Mine is yeah. cancer and I'm cancer free right now. Oh, I don't know how, you, how your test turned out that day. We were well, in it's the, okay. In the lab. I'm, I'm dealing with different things. And that's the thing when you're adopted, you don't know what your gene pool is. You either have it so you know that they had it or you might get it later or it's just a real puzzle. All I can say is, since I have the osteoporosis and everything, for women to please get a bone scan in your 40s. They don't push it till maybe you're in your 60s. You've lost bone by then. Um, I had already lost bone by the time I practically browbeat the doctor into ordering the test. Um, it's something that you, you really need to keep on top of. And um, then, of course, I ended up with Apparently, diabetes is in my family tree, too, but and some other things. And, you know, but you and I, we're resilient. We learn how to bloom where we're planted. You got that right. And I think our faith does that, but also the people around us. And so that if, if something doesn't slam me to the floor, which this did, but if you're not bleeding on the floor, it just... <laughs> Get over it. Get up and get your, you know, do your thing. So. Well, and it makes you stronger and it gives you a, so much compassion for it's the next person you meet. Exactly. Walking exactly. your walk. Exactly. Because uh, people say, oh, I've got this and that. Other people, if you haven't experienced that kind of pain or whatever, you go, well, that's nice. And they're patronizing. And, but if you've been there where they are and you know, then you can minister to them. And... And, so, that, that, and my dad always had such a great sense of humor, too. It's very subtle. And Patrick has that, too. And you really have to listen. He's so funny. And, and we're... Oh, yeah. Here, this one tells a whole story that I love to talk about. Yeah. My, my dad didn't really come from a faith family. Though some of them went to church, you know, uh, Mother's Day, funerals, wedding, you know, the usual. But um, when he started dating my mom, then he kind of learned what a Christian family was like. So that's good. And there weren't nannies in your life. You you were oh, raised. Oh no! Uh -uh. You were raised by a mother and father, oh, and yeah. and that nurturing. Yeah. As soon as I was tall enough, I was helping with the ironing, and you know, I was doing everything. And church was a real part of your life. Oh yeah, and they were ones that join in to things in the church. And, and we're real lucky. And those of you that don't have that privilege, you know, make it a priority now to do it. This looks like yeah, the home the place. The Lord is a friend for life. Yeah. Now that No matter what your other friends do to you or with you or <laughs> others. Um, uh, the ones- I love that one. You tell me why. It's just so homey and charming. And we used to have a, an old log cabin was on the ranch out in uh, Sunny Valley that had been abandoned there. We didn't live in it. The house was separate. But there was an old log cabin there with a, kind of a player piano with the big pedals oh, and all that kind of stuff. A and, pump organ, maybe. Mm, That's, mm -hmm. That uh, was like and that. And do you know the name of the people that had developed that property? Who's... who's uh, 
thousand acres that was before your dad bought it, your folks? Well, this, you're not being... I know who he sold it to, but see, he bought that before my time. He was still in the military ah. when he heard about the one in Sunny Valley uh -huh. um, to have that. So I, I don't know. Well, let me just point out that this is the East Coast part <coughs> of their family. Yeah. And this is the West Coast out at... Yeah. Well, people call it Sunny Valley, but lots of us remember it as Graves Creek. Oh, yeah. And then they decided... Oh, yeah, the other's a much happier name. I'm glad they changed it from Grave Creek, <laughs> though we did live along Grave Creek. You it did? ran through our property. Oh, on the way to the Rogue River, huh? Years later, I went that route, and you could see how they hook up, but I just had the one creek when I was growing up. And fun? Our nearest neighbor was a mile away. I'll bet. Now... Every one of these is a work of art, and yeah. your mother was such a precious. Yeah. Oh, and then when she would volunteer for these things, she was a joiner of clubs and things, especially in the Los Angeles area. Well, she would volunteer me too. Of course. So, oh, we had one room at the house that was just table decorations, you know, that we'd made. Mm. And, and that, uh, now this one shows all that kind of stuff. Shows the mill. Oh yeah, that's charming in the winter time. It's pretty. And the different churches and the little steeples and all those precious things. Oh, yeah. I fell in love with the Gus. <laughs> and you're just an extension of the family. Yeah, the and one and only. I didn't, they didn't adopt anymore, so. I am so glad I got to meet you. And thank you for bringing your treasures oh, for I our TV it. show. Um, I'm Bernie Martin Beck, and I get to uh, meet people all around. I mean, Sunny Valley, who would have guessed that your roots and mine would come together. Thank you so much for tuning in, and thanks for being my guest, because my pleasure. these are wonderful treasures. Yeah. You think someday you'll frame them all? I've got to figure out how to do that. <laughs> Maybe a ladder type of thing. I, I don't know. I'm not a woodworker myself, so oh, I had, would have beautiful. to figure out and hang them in my uh, guest room. We'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in to Journeys and Journals. I'm Bernie Martin Beck saying bye for now. <laughs> <laughs>